Speed versus brains, power versus stealth. The Russian Tu-160 versus the American B-21 Raider. Which bomber is truly supreme? Every day that the war in Ukraine rages is one day closer to a possible confrontation between the United States and the Russian Federation. And one thing is for sure, if war between the two breaks out, these two bombers are going to be some of the most important aircraft in the sky. Currently, the B-21 Raider is not yet operational, so let's fast forward a few years to the hypothetical conflict where the two nations' strategic bombers find themselves caught in the most catastrophic war since World War II. The difference between the bombers and their capabilities will likely spell victory for their side. So which is the better bomber? The Tupolev 160 or Tu-160, Beli Lebed, White Swan in Russian, or as it's known by its NATO codename Blackjack, is a truly impressive aircraft from a nation that stopped producing impressive aircraft a long time ago. To date, it's the largest and heaviest military aircraft that can exceed speeds of Mach 2, and second only to the American XB-70 when it comes to size and speed. Other aircraft are faster, but like the XB-70 prototype, the Blackjack was designed to penetrate deep and fast into enemy airspace to deliver conventional or more likely nuclear bombs. Today, it's in a class completely of its own as the largest, fastest bomber in the world, and it steals a trick from the famous American F-14 Tomcat with its variable sweep wing technology. The Blackjack has its origins all the way back in 1967 when one thing became abundantly clear. Conventional bombers were no longer survivable in the modern jet age. The Soviets needed something new, but despite laying the groundwork for stealth technology, never followed through on that idea, leaving it to the Americans to exploit with stunning success. Instead, the Soviets decided they'd just go fast, really fast, and bring a lot of bombs while going really fast. It was Looney Tunes logic at its finest, but the idea worked splendidly. In 1972, the Soviets launched a competition for a variable sweep bomber that could fly at speeds of up to Mach 2.3 which would have left most surface-to-air missiles in the dust at the time, or so starved of inertia that they'd be ineffective in bringing the bomber down. The variable sweep design was a necessity for subsonic and supersonic flight, allowing the plane to change its geometry and be more efficient at faster speeds. The Blackjack would compete against the American B-1, though the B-1 project would actually be cancelled thanks to the development of cruise missiles and the development of the B-2 bomber. The United States saw stealth, not speed, as the ultimate guarantor of safety for its bomber fleet, and the B-1 was suddenly out of the job. With only a few prototypes built, the B-1 would be cancelled until it was restarted in 1981 due to delays with the B-2. In November 1981, an airline passenger photographed a strange plane at Zukovsky Airfield, officially revealing the prototype to the world. The big bomber would undergo further testing and refinement until finally being authorized for serial production in 1984. An extremely successful bomber, the Blackjack would see a production run of 36 aircraft, with 27 operational bombers and 9 test craft. This pales in comparison with the American B-1, which saw 101 aircraft developed, but the war in Afghanistan put serious budgetary pressures on the Soviet Union, and the ensuing collapse only made defense budget woes even worse. The new Russian Federation, however, had a problem. The Blackjack was designed to carry nuclear weapons very far and very fast, and in the post-Cold War era, it was conventional war not nuclear war that was the primary agenda. Thus, in 2002, all 15 surviving Tu-160s underwent a modernization program which saw mixed results. Modifications to the aircraft allowed them to now carry a variety of conventional weapons, including the KH-555 air-launched cruise missile, as well as receiving communication, navigation, and engine upgrades, as well as life extension care. However, the initial plan to modernize its avionics was scrapped due to costs and it wouldn't be until 2014 that the first modern radar and avionics suites would be installed. Further hampering efforts to modernize the Blackjack was corruption inside the Ministry of Defense and a weak Russian industry and defense budget both. The collapse of the Soviet Union saw many specialists and the companies they worked for end up in now independent nations, forcing the Russian Federation to attempt to restart these enterprises at home. This met with very mixed success, and Russian firms struggled, as they have historically, in producing updated engines. By August of 2022, only five of the 17 strong fleet had new engines installed. After the breakup of the Soviet Union, Ukraine inherited 19 of the big bombers, over half of the entire Soviet fleet. After lengthy negotiations, 11 of the 19 aircraft were purchased by the Russian Federation, and the remaining eight were scrapped under the terms of the Nun Lugar Cooperative Threat Reduction Agreement. 
20 years later this ended up being a massive mistake for Ukraine, who could not have foreseen that its own bombers are now delivering cruise missile strikes against its civilian population. Though long out of production, the resurgent Russia announced plans in 2008 to resume serial production of the Blackjack until a fleet of 50 aircraft had been established. However, Russian industry suffered from very serious brain drain after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the ensuing troubling years of Vladimir Putin's presidency. Lacking the technical expertise in electron beam welding or working with titanium that it once had, Russia took until November 2017 to develop a fully assembled but unfinished 2160. Full-scale production was estimated to ramp up in 2019, with new airframes delivered in 2023, and in 2018, the first new blackjack built in over 30 years had its maiden test flight. However, sanctions have rocked Russia hard and prevented the expected delivery of two new aircraft by 2022. Instead, in January of 2022, a single 2160 undertook a test flight from an airfield owned by the Kazan Aviation Plant. Much like America's restarting of the B-1 in the 1980s, the Blackjack is resuming production as a stopgap measure due to delays with Russia's own stealth bomber program, codenamed PAKDA. But thanks to international sanctions, the future of both programs is now in serious question. 17 of the bombers are believed to exist, but only 11 have been verified as operational today. Each bomber is powered by four NK-32 afterburning turbofan engines, the most powerful engines to ever be fitted to a combat aircraft. This allows the 110-ton bomber to fly at speeds of Mach 2.05, a necessity that the US dropped from its B-1 Lancer due to an interest in reducing the plane's radar cross-section. The aircraft carries weapons in two internal bays, each of which can carry 44,000 pounds of free-fall bombs or nuclear missiles in rotary launchers. The aircraft can also carry long-range missiles and external hardpoints, allowing it to bring a lot of pain to a fight very fast. Fully loaded to bear, the 2160 has a range of 6,500 miles, but it has the capacity to be refueled in air to extend that range if needed. Now in the blue corner is America's newest and greatest, the B-21 Raider. This is a bomber that's not even operational yet and deeply shrouded in mystery. Given that few solid details of the B-2 bomber have ever leaked, and that aircraft is over 40 years old, it's unlikely the world is going to be learning the true potential of the B-21 anytime soon. But we can make some solid guesses. Like the Blackjack, the B-21 Raider is a long-range strategic bomber, the culminating effort of the US Air Force's long-range strike bomber program. The plane is so secretive that at its unveiling ceremony in December of 2022, only the front of the plane was visible, and photographers were not allowed to get within several hundred feet of the aircraft. The B-21 was first planned in 2011, and according to the Congressional Research Service, its size required stealth, structure, number and type of engines, projected weapons, and onboard sensors all remain classified, so bear with us as we try to glean pearls of information from a deep web of secrecy. In 2011, the US Air Force woke up to the reality of a rising Chinese threat in the Pacific and an increasingly belligerent Russia. It needed a tool to counter modern and extremely sophisticated air defenses in order to put steel on target where it hurt the most. And right off the bat, this is where the B-21 took a different development plan than its boomer grandpa, the B-2. Unlike the B-2, the B-21 would be designed as both a conventional and nuclear deterrent which meant that the Air Force would order it in large numbers, possibly enough to replace its B-52 fleet. By 2014, the Air Force conducted initial research and issued a request for industry to submit proposals for a new bomber aircraft. After top-secret review of various submissions, the development contract was awarded to Northrop Grumman in October 2015, prompting protests by both Boeing and Lockheed Martin, who filed bid protests. In October 2016, the Government Accountability Office cited costs as the decision to pursue the Northrop Grumman design and rejected Boeing and Lockheed's challenges. Unlike traditional weapons programs, the entire B-21 program is being managed by the Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, an agency designed to cut through red tape and seek off-the-shelf solutions wherever possible. The AFRCO was designed to help with the Air Force to adapt to battlefield threats within months of encountering them, if not less time. The fact that the Rapid Capabilities Office was placed in charge of the B-21 program is a clear indication that the US sees a pressing need for the B-21 to be fully operational sooner rather than later. Northrop Grumman describes the B-21 as the world's first sixth-generation aircraft, but the B-21 is more than a one-trick pony, as back in 2015, 
the Air Force publicly stated that the Raider would need to function not just as a bomber, but also an intelligence collection platform, battle manager, and even interceptor, hinting at the B-21's ability to carry long-range air-to-air missiles. With its network sensor shoot capabilities, the B-21 would also penetrate deep into denied airspace and directly guide other aircraft's weapons to their targets without using its own and giving away its location. The Air Force initially planned for 100 B-21s, ramping up for a full fleet of between 175 to 200 aircraft. Due to the similarity in engine design to those powering the F-35, the B-21 could see a dramatic cost reduction that would make this the world's first affordable stealth bomber. Historically speaking, the U.S. Air Force has had big plans and short pockets when it comes to high-capability aircraft such as the B-21. In a stunning development for any major weapons program, by February of 2022, just before Russia's invasion of Ukraine and just six years from greenlighting production, six B-21 Raiders were confirmed to be in production, with its first public flight scheduled for 2023. The program remains so secret, however, that the Air Force won't even release the estimated cost of the entire B-21 contract, as it claims that the figure would reveal too many capabilities of what is turning out to be the most classified U.S. Air Force program in history. Currently, it's estimated that each B-21 would cost about $700 million, an absolutely stunning figure, but well under the over $1 billion figure of the B-2 bomber. In what would be a first in U.S. history, Australia could possibly also operate America's most capable stealth bomber. Citing security concerns over a conflict with China and the South Pacific, Australia has stated that its fleet of F-35s is insufficient to deliver credible firepower far from its own shores. However, B-21s flying from secure bases in the south of Australia, well outside Chinese threat envelopes, could fly an estimated 2,500 miles to threaten targets far from Australian shores. In August of 2022, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall stated that the U.S. was willing to have a conversation about allowing Australia to join in the development of the B-21. With a total payload, range, engine, speed, altitude, and radar cross-section all classified, there's not much of a tail of the tape when it comes to the B-21. So, which aircraft is better? Currently, the Tu-160 has all the advantages. Yes, its avionics, engines, and fundamental structure is all dated, but the Tu-160 is a combat-proven platform, while the B-21 remains untested except on the drawing board and highly classified simulations. However, unlike Russia, the U.S. has a track record of making promises on capabilities and keeping them. And the B-21 is built off the back of the highly successful B-2, which is already a significant threat modern air forces struggle to defeat. With a smaller payload than the B-2, the Raider is going to bring less firepower to the fight than the Blackjack. In order to retain its stealthy characteristics, the B-2 is almost certainly going to be a subsonic bomber, meaning the Tu-160 also gets the speed advantage. In a conflict where mass matters, the Tu-160 wins hands down, with its speed and larger payload. However, the B-21 is designed to fight an intelligent war. Its stealth will allow it to penetrate deep into denied airspace and strike exactly where it hurts the most. U.S. air warfare doctrine sees the use of stealth aircraft and precision long-range standoff attack munitions to strike at command and control hubs, logistics networks, and other targets as vital to the operation of a modern military. Knocking these critical nodes offline can throw an army into disarray as we've seen happen in Ukraine with the use of the HIMARS. Plus, with a healthier budget and the U.S.'s robust economy, the B-21 will inevitably be purchased in greater numbers than the Tu-160, offsetting the mass advantage the Blackjack might enjoy. Its far greater survivability also means the B-21 will be flying long after the last Russian Tu-160 has been blown out of the sky. As an added bonus to ground crews and any wildlife in the vicinity, the B-21 will also not be expelling extremely hazardous nitric acid as it takes off, which is not just cancerous but can have catastrophic effects on exposed flesh. Now go check out Dumb Reasons Russia is Losing the War, or click this video instead.